Say my name, James Corden, 102.7 <laughs> Kiss FM. The man is in, he is in the trenches this week, getting ready for music's most massive night. The Grammys on Sunday. He was in a boy band as a child, and now <laughs> he is with us. James, how are you, James Corden? I'm good, man. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. I was reading my notes, as I know you do when you have guests on your show, and I saw the note sure. that said you were in a boy band. Well, I think we're being a bit kind. <laughs> I mean, we were we yes. I formed two boy bands. I formed three boy three bands at school, and two of them were boy bands. The first one was called Full Frontal. Okay. But we never really did a show. We just walked around telling people at school that we were a new boy band, but we never actually rehearsed or did, <laughs> did anything. And then my next band was a boy band, and we were called Insatiable. You know why? Because you just can't get enough, and we were huge in the High Wycombe area, which is a small town just outside, like an hour outside of London. We played to huge crowds at both of the shows that we played, uh, you know, at like a village fair and a school talent show. Uh, and then that band disbanded because of musical differences. And then I formed another band called Twice Shy, so that we could call our first album Once Bitten. Oh, that's great. Uh, so so there, it's yeah. a pretty rich tapestry, really. I, I'm sort of amazed I haven't done a VH1 behind the music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because well, I feel like there's enough stories there. Sure, and it seems fitting that you would be at the helm for Sunday night with all of the other artists that are in your league. Well, I think that's why they've chosen me as, as a host. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because of the bands that I formed at school. Yeah, yeah your background. You know, now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what, what, how is it? Are you, I, I assume you're in the middle. I, I think I saw you, you, you said that um, the rehearsals are kind of great. It's like every big artist in the world just performing for you. Well, we're not in the Staples Centre yet. We get in there this afternoon and we will be, uh, and then it starts really. We, we've been rehearsing, they call it off site. Oh. which just basically means another room. Um, <laughs> and we've been rehearsing here on uh, how we're going to sort of kick the show off yeah. and stuff like that. And then, and then, I mean, the truth is, you know, you've done big shows. Like this. It's like the running order is still kind of changing just because of logistics of, oh, that person's got this many musicians and this person's got that many dancers and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, but it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it so far. Until I, I, Sunday night, and then I'll just start throwing up. Well, this, I mean, you, you do this every night. I mean, this is something that you're... Well, I don't. You're being very kind. I do a show that is on in the middle of the night where basically <laughs> the majority of the world, if they catch the show, it's because they've woken up and realized they've left the TV on. But this, <laughs> this, this is a very different experience. This is, this is basically the Grammys, and I can only imagine that at about 10 past eight or 10 past five, depending on where you are in the world, people will realize that CBS have made a huge mistake. And I imagine this will probably be the end of my career. So it's been really <laughs> nice knowing you. I've really loved all the support that the show's given me. And if you're ever in the UK, when I'm back on their hospital radio, I'd love you to come by and help us out. Uh, um, we, <laughs> we were just talking with Lady Gaga last hour about her, her halftime show. Did you see it? Oh my God. Wasn't it amazing? It was I, just incredible. She was unbelievable. I mean, it sort of ruined stuff for us because we were actually going to open the show with me on the top of the Staples Center singing <laughs> God Bless America and then jumping I was into the crowd. Coming right? on wires. Yeah. So it, it, has, it has meant that we've had to make some quite big changes to our show for the Grammys. I wish you'd have run it by us. Yeah, as James, but, as, uh, as James Corden said changing constantly this grammy show uh so this is uh sunday eight eastern five pacific it's cbs i was gonna ask you about uh careful karaoke i saw stevie wonder when he was on mm. you called your wife he called your yes. wife and he's yes. saying i just called to say i love you to her i don't yes. know how you beat that valentine's day is coming that's as good as it gets i'm thinking yeah i'm still dining out on that i'm yeah, still <laughs> like anytime if i'm home late if I'm, you know, in a bit of a mood and my wife will go, back. babe, my, my wife will be like, babe, you said you'd be here at this time. I'm like, I got Stevie Wonder to sing to you. So <laughs> until you get Beyonce to ring me, this is not a discussion. <laughs> this, is, um, this is not a conversation. 
yeah, I don't actually. I just immediately start crying and go, "I'm sorry, you're right. You should leave me. I'm terrible." But uh, <laughs> you know, no, it was uh, it was a pretty cool, cool moment. In fact, here's an emo- like so. Last year at the Grammys, mm. Stevie Wonder was there, and it was maybe like six months after we'd recorded the carpool with him, maybe more, maybe seven or eight months. And we were walking down the corridor, and I said, "Stevie," and he went, "I know that voice, James." And I was like, oh, my goodness, that's ridiculous. How would you know that? It really made my day. There wasn't enough people around to witness it. I was quite annoyed. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you on Sunday. Thanks for calling, bro. Thanks so much. Okay. See you, guys. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.